Every society has all kinds and all sorts of people in it. But this individual, we do not know enough about him. For this individual, we don't know his full name. And this individual, we don't know his lineage. We do not know his parents' name. We don't know where he was coming from. How about we discuss the like of a man called Julaybib radiallahu ta'ala an. Julaybib radiallahu ta'ala an. A man from Medina. Which tribe he belonged to, we do not know. Where he was coming from, no one knows. Where he was going, who knows? But this man, Julaybib, we know of him because he believed in the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Such an amazing story. It happened at the time of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when a man who's short, not best looking Sahabi, he comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and from his tone, you can see he's hurt. And he says, Ya Rasulullah. He said, Oh Messenger of Allah, isn't it? That when a man believes in you and the message that you brought to us, he will be from the people of Jannah. And he will marry from the women of Jannah. As though he's saying, my shape, the way I look does not matter. What matters is what I have in my heart. Because you're the one who told us all the messenger of Allah. Allah doesn't look at your shapes. Allah doesn't look at the way you look and your shapes. But He looks into your deeds, into your heart, into your a'mal. The best of you are those of you who have the most righteousness. Ya Rasulullah, isn't this the case? And the messenger of Allah says, absolutely. Absolutely. Then he said, Then what is wrong with your companions who are sitting right here, some of them? Why would they not allow me? Why wouldn't they allow me to marry their daughters? I want to get married and everybody's rejecting me because the way I look, Ya Rasulullah. This individual did not have the wealthy parents. We do not even know his parents' name. This individual didn't have all the women chasing after him. This individual didn't even have friends. For how on earth could he have a wife if he doesn't have a friend? If he doesn't have an associate, if he doesn't have a companion? If people are not even interested in befriending this person, how could this man ever find a wife in his life? And the messenger of Allah, do you see, they do that? And he said, do you know so and so? And he said, yes. He said, go to them and tell them to marry you their daughter. So Julaybib all excited. Finally he's gonna get married, all happy. He went to the family and he knocked on the door. They said, who is it? Qala Julaybib. And they said, welcome Julaybib. And they opened the door. Husband and wife. And he said, Messenger of Allah is proposing to your daughter and before he finished, they said, Allahu Akbar, this is a great news. Who, who else could we ask for? Who's better than the Messenger of Allah? He's coming to marry our daughter. Allahu Akbar, this is a beautiful news. And he said, but he's asking her for me, not for himself. And they were shocked. And so he goes back inside the house and he asks his wife. And he said, Indeed the Messenger of Allah, he wants to marry your daughter off. And she assumed the same. And she said, Yes, definitely for him. We will marry our daughter off to the Prophet And he said, He does not desire her for himself. And she said, so who for then? And then he said, it's for Julaybib. And then she said, 
Definitely not, I will marry my daughter of the Zulaykh. Definitely not. No way ever I will even consider to marry my daughter of. And they said, couldn't he send Abu Bakr to marry our daughter? Umar, Uthman, why him? And they were speaking loud enough that he hurt them. And that really hurt and broke his heart. And he went down and he walked out of the door. And he went to the messenger of Allah and he said, Ya Rasulullah, this is what they did. And Rasulullah said, this is what they did? Yes, Ya Rasulullah. But they came to talk to him and they realized that he's left, he's gone. But the young lady was in the house and she overheard their conversation. So she said, what are you talking about? And they said, this is the request of the Messenger of Allah. Guess what she said? Qalat subhanallah. Listen to this. She said, what would you say to the ayah? It is not for a mu'min, men or women, male or female, young or old. It is not for them. If Allah and His Messenger decide in a matter, for them to have an opinion in that, let me marry the man. And the parents, they came to their sense and said, Wallahi, Jazakallahu khair, you're right. So the father left the house, went after Julaybib, and he went to the Masjid al Nabi, and when Rasulullah saw him, he said, You the man who rejected my orders? He said, Ya Rasulullah, may Allah forgive me, but we accept your proposal. So Rasulullah said to Julaybib, Ya Julaybib, and this is my wordings, go and find something for your wife. Go get her a gift. Say, Ya Rasulullah, I'm a poor man, I don't have anything. So the Sahaba of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam start giving him money, food, something to prepare for the wedding. And Subhanallah, Anas he said, this young lady, Radiyallahu Anha, because she accepted the order of Rasulullah, wealth and barakah was coming to her in abundance. Every time people are giving her money, everything that she touched is mubarak. And his wedding night, or his wedding day, he hears a caller. A caller for the people to come out to defend the deen of Allah. And Julaybib said, for a very long time I was looking for a wife. Should I proceed and go ahead? Or should I leave everything that I dreamt about and go and entertain the request of Rasulullah? And he chose to go with the order of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when he went and the battle was over, the messenger of Allah said to the Sahaba, are you missing anyone? They said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, so and so is missing, and so and so is also missing. And then he said, are you missing anyone else? Another group they said, yes, so and so is also missing. And the messenger of Allah said, but I am missing Julaybi. Let us go and look for Julaybi. And they went and they searched for him and they found him dead. He is of me and I am of him. He is of me and I am of him. He's of me and I am of him. And he picked the body of Julaybib and he removed the dirt and the dust from the face of Julaybib. And he hugged him and he squeezed him like a father may hug and squeeze his own son. And he said, Subhanallah, now, Ya Julaybib, you can marry from the women of Jannah. 
You can marry from the Hur al Ain, O Jalaybib. Subhanallah. Anas bin Malik said, The Sahaba of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after they got back from the battlefield, they were chasing each other. They were racing towards that young lady to propose to her. Why? Of her barakah. Because she accepted what Allah and His Messenger said. And she realized this is what Allah wants from us. Allah blessed her and everybody was able to see the blessings. Live Islam like that. Be part of that. Live your legacy. Live with those people who passed before us. What was so unique about our Prophet ﷺ? Our Prophet ﷺ was concerned with those who were living on the fringes of society, who were living on the extremes of society. My Prophet was concerned with those people. He was asking, inquiring about those people that no one would care about, that no one would bother speaking to, that no one would bother befriending, that no one would want to marry. Our Prophet was concerned with those people. Asking about their welfare, asking about their social welfare, asking about their life. How are you doing? What do people want, my dear brothers? And so the Prophet with Julaybib, he showed everyone, this is how you humanize a person that others run the risk of dehumanizing. And we don't even know his full name, we don't know any details about him, shows all of us the man was not important, but in the eyes of the Prophet, he was important. This man is from me and I am from him. <laughs> this man, this man, this man is from me. And I, I am from him. This is the story of Julaybib. There was another man who lived on the outskirts of Medina. This man also, we don't know much about him. His name was Zahir. We don't know that much about him. Zahir radiallahu anhu, as is narrated in Al-Bayhaqi, was a man with a very, very, you know, repulsive appearance. And he was also someone with a low self-esteem. And in fact, there's a beautiful story that Rasulullah sallallahu he once saw Zahir radiallahu ta'ala anhu in the marketplace selling his, his, his stuff. And Rasulullah sallallahu grabbed him from the back. And he started to wrestle with him. And he started to say, who's going to buy this slave of mine? Who's going to buy this slave of mine? And Rasulullah is playing with him again to rec so that he can know that Rasulullah is aware of him. And Zahir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he saw the hands of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and remember Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu describes the hands of the Prophet sallallahu in this smooth texture, smoother than silk, subhanAllah. And he recognized the voice of the Prophet sallallahu then he didn't fight back too hard because he wanted to be close to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says to the Prophet sallallahu something very, very hurtful, not to the Prophet sallallahu but rather he, he degrades himself. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, idhan tajiduni kasi, that no one's gonna wanna buy me anyway. Who would wanna buy me even if I was a slave? SubhanAllah. So even though they were laughing and they were joking, but Zahir radiallahu anhu again was brought down when he recognized that he was someone that was repulsive in appearance. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he turns Zahir around and he puts his hands on his shoulders and he says, وَلَكِنَّكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ رَبِيح But with Allah you are not cheap. <laughs> but with Allah you are not cheap. It may be that with the people you might have this position an expectation, but with Allah you are not cheap. And imagine the kind of happiness he would have experienced on that day for the Prophet to say that to him. And once Zahir he came, this individual who no one really knew too well, and he took out his mat and he placed it on the floor and he used to sell a few things. You know, he used to bring cheese for the Prophet. 
where others would come and they would lavish these expensive gifts for their Prophet. He had nothing to gift him with except small pieces of cheese that he would bring from the desert. And out of this innocent and pure recognition, he would have these pieces of cheese wrapped up and said, this is for you, Ya Rasulullah. <laughs> Look at the... This is for you, Ya Rasulullah. And the Prophet loved him. He taught us a different way of perceiving the world. He taught us a different way of understanding humanity, a different way of understanding one another. He taught us a different way, a different method, different outlook towards Muslims, towards seeing one another. You know, Zahir and Julay people are human beings. We have responsibility, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam.